Now, let me say that I know that it's resurrection, you know, Sunday, Sunday that we acknowledge and set aside as a, as a resurrection. And, and I, of course, you know, prayed about that and thought about it, but I could not get peace in being given you a traditional message. couldn't get peace and settle in my spirit. So this is, you know, what I wanted to do, you know, me and that bracket, because all over, I guess all over the country and the world, they'd be shouting and hollering and screaming, he rose, and so forth, and it has its place, but uh, we are in unusual times. This is not business as usual. We're in a peculiar time. And so there's nothing traditional about where we are today in the church world. So, you know, for that reason, I'm not, I have no issue with not being uh, within the cycle of tradition. This is an unusual time, and the church is in a very peculiar place. Not that it hadn't probably been there before, but not in our lifetime. So um, I have a word that I want to share, which is uh, more of a, a prophetic word and a prophetic warning and, and a prophetic uh, maybe chastisement and a prophetic description concerning the church as I see it today and what I believe that God is saying to me concerning that. Is that okay? I don't want to, if you're to come, you come today, I don't want to waste your time, so I want to give you something that, that would I consider as relevant to the time that we're in right now. Is that okay? I'm going to take a moment and go an unusual uh, uh, route and place, but it, I believe this will be, I'll be in obedience. At least I have peace with this more than with just following the traditional story, which all of y'all have heard a million times. And, and so, listen to today, you know, won't add or take away nothing from you. So, so let's, let's dive into this just for a few moments. I'm uh, trying to hit y'all for 9 30, like I've been doing every Sunday. This is what I'm going to use for the subject today. In love with the Lamb's wife. I 
have been sent before him. He who, this is a follow-up statement after that, he who has the bride is the bridegroom. I underline that because that's where I'm going to zero in for a minute. I am not the Christ, he said. And he went on to say, he who has the bride is the what? He who has the bride is the bridegroom. Then he shifts a little bit more. He says, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him. So you have the bride, you have the bridegroom, and you have the friend of the bridegroom. That, 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 you, you follow the, the three? You have the bride, and he who has the bride, who, who the bride belongs to, that's the bridegroom. And then John identifies the friend, what we call in the wedding, the best man. The friend of the bridegroom, the best man. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices because of the bridegroom. So in other words, the best man should be rejoicing with the bridegroom because he found his bride. He rejoices with the bridegroom. Kind of the layout of, you know, what John is getting at something here. So, the church is the bride. We all know that. The church is the, all through a revelation, all through the word. So you have the bride, that's the church. You have the bridegroom, that's Christ. You have the friend of the bridegroom, which then would be church leadership. Those who the bridegroom has entrusted with the care of protecting her because he's a friend of the bridegroom. While he's away, he will cover her and protect her. Why? Because this is the this is the best man. So I'm connected with the bridegroom, and, and if he's not there, whatever, uh, he's going to trust me to protect his bride. Yeah, and I owe that to him as being his best man, his friend. So we're not going before we understand the church is the bridegroom, is the bride of Christ. 2 Corinthians 11 says something very interesting. Look what he says. This is God speaking. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. Now this is the bridegroom talking about his bride. I am jealous with a godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. God is talking in this thing. You've been betrothed to one husband and to be protected that I may present you as a choice, a chaste version to Christ, the bridegroom. All right. And then, of course, Matthew 16, he talks about this church upon this rock. You know, we preach that a lot all the time too. I be of my church, the bride in the earth. And the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it or against her. And that's saying that, uh, that, that she is divinely protected where no spiritual forces of evil or darkness will ever overrun her. Because she, she's, that's what the gates of hell, that spiritual darkness shall, shall not overrun her. And so forth and so on. 
So you have scriptures that talk about God's commitment and dedication to his bride. But here's what I want to start to share. This is what I call, I don't have not, not long, uh, the relevant, relevant reality of the church for today. The relevant reality of the church, the bride. This is the relevant reality of the church. So here comes a prophetic word that I want to share what's in my heart concerning the church world and so forth today. And what is that relevant reality? The church has been left in the hands of the best man. That's the leadership that God has put to oversee. Because according to John 14, Christ says words like, I'm going to prepare a place for you. When I come back, I'll receive you. Revelation talks about when he comes, he's going to get his bride, which is the church, and, and, and all of us will be invited with, with the church to, to the marriage of the Lamb and so forth and so on. So um, the bridegroom has left to make preparation for his bride, and he's left her. And I know this is a little bit of metaphor, but you can follow this train of thought. He's left her in the hands of the best man, so to speak, of the friend of the bridegroom. That's church leadership. That's the eldership, pastors, apostles, prophets, so forth and so on. He's entrusted us. So we are, what John says, I am not the Christ. I am not the bridegroom. I am the friend of the bridegroom. So, so, the pastor, prophet, teacher, so forth, so on, is not the Christ. They are the friend of the bridegroom. I just got to lay this out so you can get it. Be right here with me. And since he is gone to prepare a place for his bride, she is left and have been entrusted into the hands of the friend, the pastor, prophet, teacher, so forth, who are to watch and protect her until he comes back to receive his bride. She is not yours, she is his. Hmm? Everybody with me now? So here comes the question. What are we gonna say to Jesus when he comes back for his bride and discover that you've been intimate with her? When he discover that you have taken his bride and made her yours. And now she don't give glory to God, she gives glory to you. Lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you. I told you it's going to be a hard word. I, I, my preachers ain't going to be my friends today. They know they're going to probably send me a word text, you know. But that's okay. Let me put it another way. I'm staying right here because I, I know we're trying to get more dollar. Have we taken the church from God? Have we left God for his bride? So that the church no longer serves God, it serves man yeah. in the wrong way. Now I have other notes in there that says that we were entrusted and she was supposed to bad children that's conceived by the spirit, spiritual children, but because now we become intimate with, intimate with her, she has children, but she's given birth to children of the flesh, carnal children, so the church is full of carnality because she's being impregnated by man to serve man, and so she's full of carnality instead of children of the spirit, she's now full of children of the flesh. And the church should be the glory of creation. It should be the, 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 the in the earth realm, it ought to be the envy of the world. She represents the bride of Christ. The, uh, an institution of sanctity and sacredness and holiness and truthfulness and integrity and character and honor in everything that bears the attributes of God. And instead, 
Look at her today. She's on lockdown. Everybody got their mouth on her. Everybody got their hands on her. And the, and the friend of the bride don't even know what to do. He's at home, and she's suffering it out by herself. Lift your hand and tell the Lord. Thank you. Have we left God for his bride? How will you explain this? No wonder a lot of time when the Holy Spirit comes in, it disrupts our program. We shut down the spirit because it's not it's working against our agenda. That's right. That's right. So the church can bring deliverance to glorify God because we got to give the glory to man. I, I was part of persuasion where, you know, I, even when the high spirit of praise was going on, no disrespect to the church, but I love your praise, but just, just speaking from my heart today, you, you know, and, and, and when certain people walk in, they shut down the entire praise, shut down everything. Everybody get on your feet. The, the, the apostle is walking in. The bishop is walking. The devil is alive. Who is this for? The glory goes to God. John had enough wisdom to say, I am not the bridegroom. I am the friend of the bridegroom. We have lost our place in the ceremony. We don't want to stand next to the bridegroom. We want to get out of the way. This is a, a fine one right here. She can choose work for me. And now she's so disrespected that everybody, even the unbeliever, can put their mouth on her. Because we haven't protected her. That was a time when people were scared to put their mouth on the church. But because we have done so, now the world doesn't respect her or us. And we can't get a word from God what to do with the church. Go, don't go, do this, do that. So much chaos and division. So it's a prophetic word. And now, the way I see God said, look at her. She's on lockdown. Because y'all don't know how to protect her. See it on resurrection morning, it's empty all across America. And then the clamor glorifying it. Look at the churches, they're empty. You think there's some glory in that? This is the, I know it's a building, but it represents the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the most sacred institution in the world that God has given. Church is bride. And now she's polluted, profane, prostituted. Put down and left on lockdown. And we at home waiting for the coast to be clear. To do what? Come back and do what you've been doing? Thank you. I need strength to deliver this world. Because I know this, this ain't, ain't going to be a one that you're going to rejoice. I know it's resurrection morning. Go on and preach. He rose. I'm going to deal with the state of the church. And you, leadership, who have been entrusted to be the friend of the bridegroom, who the bridegroom left her in our custody and charge to protect her and anointed us to do it with power. And we have used the power to profane and prostitute and pollute her because we desired her more than God. And so the church is not even respected in the world because the friend has done his job. Thank you. 
Lord. The prophetic word God has given me this week. To just explain this as I see it. As also, I guess, a, a rebuke. job it is to defend her with their lives. Now she should have kept this while you sit at home. Or you can go to her and pray and keep the spirit working. Say thank you Lord. You with me this morning? You feel me? And then when, when I'm going to say this, I'm going to move on to my, to, my, to my close. And then when God sends, thank God, two messengers who are committed to bringing truth and protecting of sacredness and sanctity, we spend more time killing the God-ordained leadership of the church because they are, they, they, they're not in harmony. There's, there's such a walk even within Christianity and in the church, you know, we've become political and everything else. And so, you know, I'll get attacked for this and everything else, and that's okay. But when God sends messengers with truth, we assassinate them because where are you breaking up our program? You, you, you just, you messing with our livelihood. So this is a, a sacred assembly. It represents the sacred assembly, a solemn assembly, an institution that God has set in the world as the, as, the, as the envy of the world, the church. It is the standard of, of morality, the presence of God in the earth. I know it's not just the building that's in us too, but it, 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 it serves its place. It represents God's presence where, where, where mercy can be found and grace and so forth and so on. That's what it represents. Now she's, I feel, is left on lockdown to bear this out alone. Alone. So our leadership as Christians really need to seek God and get on their knees and repent. Confusion, even about what to do. Yes, we're fighting, and it's like bad enough you know, you're dealing with these forces and this right here, and then we're in conflict, attacking one another on who's right and who's wrong. It ain't your bride, it's Christ. What did, what did God say in all of this? I, I don't take this out of context because I, you know, I'm saying, okay, everybody say what the CD say, what the government say, what the law say, what the, okay, well, what did God say in this? Can you talk to the bride? Come on, because after all, it is his bride. Don't you think he ought to have a word? That's it. I ain't heard nobody say what God said. All I hear is, well, they said this. The city said this. CDC. This one said that. But did you talk to the bridegroom about his bride? church as apostles and prophets and pastors to protect her. I'm going to give you an anointing to defend her at all costs, even with your life. Hell should not prevail against her. And he is right. The only other problem is she's being attacked not just from without, but from within. By the very walls that God put in there to protect her. Amen. 
Her name is Ecclesia. We're both fellas up there. So we're going to give her a name so in church so we can call her Ecclesia. That's her name. The Greek is the word for that. That was called out, set apart as a chaste virgin to be presented to Christ our God. Then in her gifts, apostles and prophets, so forth and so on, to keep her, protect her, elevate her. Christ comes back to receive her and not from she's become everybody's woman. She serves everybody but God. Everybody got their mouth on her. And the tragedy is on this great day she's left empty on lockdown. to get a word from God on her own. I'm going to tell the boss something. Acts 20, this is what Paul said that he was preparing what he was facing. Therefore, take heed to yourselves, talking about the leadership now, and to all the flock. Look what he said. This, this is the point of the bride which the Holy Spirit has made you oversee us. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. Shepherd the church of God. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't profane her, don't prostitute her, don't make her serve you. Shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. blood. Look what he goes on to say. There's another part of that. For I know this, though, all the that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. I didn't put the rest of it. He said, and not only the savage wolf outside, even you shall deny the faith and take her for your own use. He called them unfaithful leadership, savage wolves. First Peter 5, the elders who are among you I exalt, I am, I am also, also a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker in the glory that will be revealed. The same words, he's speaking to the leadership, the friend of the bridegroom, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseer. Not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, the bridegroom, you will receive a crown of glory that will not fade away. For what? For your faithfulness in protecting his bride. Revelation. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing now. So that when he come, we in the Spirit of God can present her to him. Clean, look what he says, and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. I don't know if she's in fine linen right now. <laughs> then he said to me, Right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. God is coming back to receive his bride.
need to say this say it to me as I see it. We are more in love with God's wife as the church than we are with God. We go to church to do church, not to do to give glory. And we make us serve us, not God. God can't even get the glory. We write songs. His name ain't even in it. We both be singing about his bride, but his name ain't in it. So, close. Can I finish? It's time to give God his bride back. That's my closing word. served man long enough. That's all. And how do we do that? Starting with the leadership, we should repent, get on our knees and pray and ask God, what do you say? Show me what to do. Stop trying to defend yourself, am I right or wrong in all of this? And stop trying to polish your image and, and just concern yourself is, what, what did God say to Ask up God concerning his church. It's time to give her back. And you give her back by repenting and rededicating yourself. Amen. I'm going to close right here. I only got one minute. And I'm not, I'm not making myself a final authority or a judge, a judge of anybody. I'm speaking the authentic word in my spirit as I see it as God revealed it and sharing it with you, inviting you. so much foolishness in church. Flesh, foolishness. This, some of this stuff is crazy. When somebody talks to the body, if you have any problems, come sleep with me. I can heal you. just start because even going way back to the hundreds of years when they were selling uh, indulgences and things like that because they saw how much money could be made and bishops and all got filthy rich off of prostituting statues and selling the people to give them protection from that so it's all she, she, it's been this spirit prostituting her to serve our interests. So it didn't get started. But thousands of years later, it looked like we done got worse. Yeah. Something wrong when, when the pastor was leading there and the church broke. Yeah. You got Rolls Royce and parking on rocks. You can't even get gravel or paved cement for the people. You driving a Rolls Royce and parking on rocks. That's God's bride. You're the friend. You're not the bridegroom. I would say to my community, I'm sorry for giving a hard word over this bridge, but I am not sorry. I'm just following my heart. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like me. And I really don't care. But the world will begin to respect the church when you start respecting them. Two examples, that's all we need. All that Peter said, shepherd her, protect her, keep her, defend her, because you're the friend who've been entrusted
some of us don't lack what we, we, we depend on. state of it all. It's just trouble. And to show you how all of this works, now, bad enough to know they're going to be empty, then they need to get on the day, bad weather coming now, y'all, take cover though. It's like you're trying to keep the rest of them. Don't go, don't nobody go. We're going to prophesy bad and prognosticate bad weather. It may rain, it ain't going to be no worse no other time. You know, you know. Okay, that's the 12 or 1 o'clock. Well, time to turn over. Yes, Lord, let it be that. Let it be. You go ahead and be going to work tomorrow in the rain. Don't take come on this resurrection. Bad weather coming. It's like you're trying to scare the ones who got to live faith. If, if the disease don't get you, bad weather look out now. It's going to hurt you. I watched the whole picture. We're, we're, we're in a bad place. But I thank God that he's committed that hell. The spiritual forces of darkness shall not prevail. I'm going to send a word that God will do something with these wolves. Yeah. Yeah. God going to deal with the wolves. God is going to deal with the wolves. Amen. He's dealing with them now. He can't make you no money now. <laughs> Can't pay your bills now. Nah. Dealing with the wolf. But she's going to be taken care of. Because it's been divinely prophesied by her bridegroom. That all, all of this happened in the end. Jeremiah, God said in Jeremiah when he was talking about the state of